Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel I post a lot of anti-MLM content. I'll link a playlist here and down below. This is my big anti-MLM playlist. We are creeping closer and closer to our hundredth video. I also feel like I don't advertise this enough, but I do break down the anti-MLM content into smaller playlists. For example, there's an entire playlist that's just horror stories, an entire playlist for deep dives, and another one for top fails videos. The one that I always link is the big all-encompassing playlist, but if there's a specific kind of video you like, there's also bingeable playlists for those types as well. And for today's video, I'm bringing you another MLM horror stories. These are your own personal experiences that you have taken the time to write out and send to me. And when I'm sitting down to film the video, I go through my email, I pick out a few and we read them for the first time together. If you ever have your own experience with an MLM company that you would like to send in to me for one of these videos, the instructions for how to do that are in the description box below. It's super easy. You just have to send me an email. But before we get into it, I want to give a huge thank you to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. It is no secret that I pride myself on being a lifelong learner and educator, and an area I absolutely know I can improve in is my Spanish speaking skills. I took Spanish in college, and let me tell you, it was a whirlwind of foreign language immersion style learning. It could be really overwhelming at times, and that's exactly why I'm so excited to have an option like Babbel. Babbel is a great tool for learning real world practical communication skills in a foreign language, and the best part, in my opinion, the lessons are only around 10 minutes minutes long. I am all about efficiency over here. Anybody can work that into their daily schedule and Babbel can get you speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. I also have a deep appreciation for the fact that these lessons are designed by real language teachers, no algorithms, no AI, and you can learn via lessons, podcasts, games, videos, even live classes if you choose. Lately, I've been using Babbel to freshen up my basic Spanish skills before we go on our trip to Mexico at the end of the month. I really like to have some quiet time in the morning before I start working working for the day. And Babbel has been such an easy integration into that morning routine. I'll pour some coffee, I'll get cozy on the couch, and I can brush up on my Spanish right from my phone. It could not be any simpler. And right now, if you visit the link in the description below, you can get 65% off your Babbel subscription and start learning a new language today. Muchas gracias, Babbel, for sponsoring today's video. This story says, hey, Hannah, I'm a new subscriber, but I love your anti-MLM content. This is a more lighthearted horror story as I didn't actually get involved in the MLM. My boyfriend's friend had invited him to his house for a little get together to quote, show him something he was working on. My boyfriend and his friend both work on music. So my boyfriend assumed that it was some new music his friend had made. You already know where this is going. We arrived at the little get together and there were about 15 people crammed into this tiny apartment. My boyfriend and I were offered drinks and accepted and then started mingling. The first red flag was that when someone in a suit at an apartment house party approached me and asked me how old I was, not my name, not how I know the host, just, hey, how old are you? I was about 25, 26 at the time, so I told him that, and he just walked away. It was then that I noticed everyone else in the party was probably around 21, maybe younger. My boyfriend and I gave each other the side eye because that was not a normal human interaction. <laughs> a lot of what MLM reps do is not considered to be a normal human interaction. Then another person, overdressed as well, asked us if we were, quote, excited for the presentation. We say, sure, looking forward to it. But at this time, we still thought it was a music project that his friend wanted to show us. Another person asks us again if we're excited for the presentation. We said yes, but we were now weirded out. After about a half an hour and everyone being on their second drink, they announced the presentation was about to begin. As we sat on the couch, I saw a sign on the wall by the TV and everything clicked. I tried to psychically tell my boyfriend that we were about to be pitched a pyramid scheme because I still didn't want to be rude and text during someone's presentation. The sign said, quote, you should be here and was on a background of a pretty blue sky with palm trees. If you didn't know, this is the World Ventures slash Dream Trips MLM, which is some kind of traveling club MLM where you sell discounted travel miles or something. Not entirely sure, but I knew it was sketchy. And in my opinion, that's all you need to know. You don't need to know all the details about these business opportunities. All you need to know is that you have a gut feeling and you should listen to that. I had actually had a high school friend try to get me to join this specific MLM previously, and I obviously declined because it sounded like a pyramid scheme to me and I already had a job at the time. So we're sitting through this presentation and it had all the highlights of any MLM speech. Free time, not in an office, make your own hours, travel for free, earn a car or something. Eventually you get a new gem added to your pin or whatever when you level up. We watched videos of people having fun on the beach and talking about how it was all possible because of dream trips. My boyfriend is now looking very confused and has realized that this is not a music presentation. We kept side 
glancing at each other and I can tell we're both trying to figure out how to get out of this. The presentation ended and they refilled everyone's drinks, which I am absolutely sure was a tactic to lower everyone's defenses. Great point, great point, and pulled out the paperwork for us to join the MLM. I explained that I'm 26 years old and have two full-time jobs and pets to take care of, so I can't really travel right now. They of course pushed back and tried to talk my boyfriend and I into signing up by basically just not listening to what we were saying and spewing out all the scripted talking points. Now there's a strategy. If you can't overcome the objection, just ignore the objection and keep going. <laughs> we eventually said that we'll think about how we could fit this into our schedules and get back to them. I saw another woman signing the paperwork and wanted to warn her, but I didn't know how to explain in the moment to this tipsy woman that it was not a good idea. Then things got weirder. <laughs> they suggested that we go to a nearby karaoke bar. At this point, my boyfriend and I had each had three drinks, so we were not comfortable driving. Their apartment was far away from us, so we didn't want to leave the car and Uber back home. We thought we would just hang out for a bit and sober up and then go home. But now we were left with the choice of staying in his friend's apartment alone while everyone else goes to karaoke or just go to karaoke karaoke with them with a designated driver, his friend's girlfriend, who was also involved in the MLM. My boyfriend and I decided to lean into the weirdness and agreed to go to karaoke. We arrived at this tiny little dive bar that didn't even ID anyone for their drinks, even though I'm sure there was a bunch of underage people there. Someone at one point poured their own beer because the bartender was gone for like 15 minutes. Someone was eating a whole sandwich that looked like they brought it from home. We watched these MLM people proceed to get absolutely trashed and do terrible karaoke. My boy my boyfriend and I had a couple more drinks and just enjoyed this weird chaotic show. I managed to get a moment alone to talk to the woman I saw signing the paperwork before. I was trying to gently ask her if she understood exactly what she was getting into by pretending like I didn't understand how the program worked so that she could explain it to me and I could ask questions to show her how weird and ridiculous this MLM was. And pause here for a second, that is an amazing strategy. I already kind of read ahead on the next line, it doesn't sound like it worked in this situation, but a piece of advice that I love giving to people who are like, how should I approach my friend who's in an MLM or in otherwise some kind of situation like this where you're trying to get someone to realize that it's not a good idea. This is exactly what I suggest. I say, ask them questions, open-ended questions, let them explain it to you and get them to kind of engage in this conversation where they're having to speak it out loud and try to answer some of these tougher questions. And by doing that, you're kind of inadvertently getting them to think through it in perhaps a way that they haven't thought through it before and the idea is to kind of get them to think about it in a new way. Anyway, I'm reading ahead. Your next sentence says it didn't work. <laughs> worth a shot though, okay? Worth a shot. She thought I was hitting on her, but I came with my boyfriend and she ignored me the rest of the night. She proceeded to get more drunk and cut into someone else's karaoke song, which I guess is a big no-no in karaoke etiquette. That's when everyone finally decided that it was time to go. We went back to the apartment and slept for a couple hours on the couch so that my boyfriend would be good to drive because it was around 2 a.m. by this time. Then we just snuck out and drove away. We heard from my boyfriend's friend a couple times after that asking if we had decided what we wanted to sign up for. Each time my boyfriend said that we just didn't think this was for us. After a few tries, we didn't hear from him again. I feel bad that there were a few people that definitely signed up for this scam. If I had just stood up and said, this is not a good idea, they probably would have just spun it as me being a naysayer or something. I hope they realized what it actually was and got out before too much damage was done. Thanks for reading. Feel free to edit as you need if you share this story. No, no editing needed here. This is a pretty typical MLM party type horror story that I often get. We were invited under these circumstances. We arrived, we realized it wasn't what we thought. We were trapped. It was sketchy. I didn't like it. I was trying to find my way out. That happens so, so often. But the piece of your story that I think is really important to highlight is the alcohol aspect. This is definitely something that needs to be addressed because just like you said, I agree that the intention of providing alcohol was to lower people's inhibitions. When you're drinking, you're in that more relaxed state. You're not thinking as clearly. You're not thinking as rationally. You think a lot more with your emotions. And I can absolutely see how that's an intentional way to get people to sign up for a business opportunity that they may not otherwise sign up for had they not been three drinks deep. 
And that in itself is a really predatory strategy, especially when it's presented in this timeline of you show up, you wait 30 minutes, you get a couple drinks in, and then they tell you why you're there and then they pitch you. Because I think it's fair to say that most people, if they know they have something big coming up, if they know that they're gonna be making some big decision, they're gonna be in some meeting, they have some kind of responsibility coming up within the next few hours, those people may choose to avoid mind altering substances, whatever that may be. And I don't feel like it was any coincidence at all that they brought people into this setting thinking that it was just like a casual weekend hangout at a friend's house, get a couple drinks in and then spring the pitch on them. And in a way you're taking away that person's agency to decide if they wanted to be intoxicated before making that decision. They did not know that they were gonna have to make a decision when they started drinking. And had they known that they were gonna be pitched an MLM when they went into it, maybe they would have made the decision to steer clear of alcohol alcohol until after the pitch or not at all. That's the piece of this story that I think is really important to talk about. That's the piece that is really messed up. It's obviously manipulative. So thank you for bringing that to light within this story. This story says, Kiora, Hannah, I'm from New Zealand and there definitely isn't as many MLMs here, thank goodness. Never heard of cold messaging or Monate or Beachbody until watching American anti-MLM videos. You guys have it rough with all the Huns over there. I want to interject for just a minute because I think this is so fascinating that people from other countries still watch this content. Of course, MLMs exist in other countries, maybe not as prevalent as in the US, but I have a lot of international viewers who are like, I have no connection to this, but it's fascinating. And I think that's awesome. A few years ago, I went along to a couple of doTERRA parties. Anyway, I just want to highlight some of the terrible health advice I heard while there. Okay, cool. So your whole story is just bullets of the different crazy things you heard at a doTERRA party, and I'm ready. They recommended ingesting the oils. This is something I have seen promoted by other sellers on Instagram too. If you look into this, you'll realize this is very shady and not evidence-based advice. I was told to put a mix of lavender, peppermint, and lemon oil, two drops each, into a capsule and ingest it to fix my hay fever. <laughs> Oils are potent, so I can't imagine what that would do to your insides when the capsule dissolved. That's what I'm saying. Lots of soft tissues in there. Oils are not necessarily meant to be interacting with those soft tissues. And personally, I've had bad reactions of applying oils topically, like I'll get a rash or something. And it honestly makes my stomach hurt and it gives me heartburn just thinking about the fact that you would ingest these oils. Oh, just not a good situation. And I appreciate the way that you put this, shady and not evidence-based. That's a great way to frame it. Because the point we're at right now is that we don't know if ingesting oils is a good thing. We don't know what the long-term effects of that are. There haven't been studies on it. So could it be fine for you? Maybe. Could it be terrible for you? Maybe. And the position I take on it is maybe it's gonna be fine, but I'm not trying to find out if it's not. And if there's no evidence or no research that it actually does the things that it's claiming to do, why would you risk it? I know the topic of ingesting essential oils is kind of controversial and it's not just isolated to the context of MLMs. A lot of people who have no affiliation with MLMs will still say ingesting oils is a good idea. I personally would never do it. They recommended using the oils to flavor water. I am embarrassed to say I tried this once with lemon and it was horrible. Even a kid could tell you that water and oil don't mix, so you get a horrid mouthful of oil at the top when you first take a sip. That is something I think I honestly never even considered and I feel stupid that I've never considered that. But yeah, how do you mix the oil into the water? It's not like it gets evenly distributed. And so again, here I am like, if you wanted lemon water, squeeze a lemon into some water. How much is a lemon? Like a dollar? Why would you spend like 17 bucks on a bottle of doTERRA lemon oil if you can just squeeze lemon juice into your water instead? I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe I would get it if there was some research as to the health benefits, but there's not. So if you want lemon flavored water, go grab Grab a lemon, give it a squeeze, probably the same effect. They use code words for illnesses because they are not allowed to actually say it treats an illness. You can look up the do's and don'ts on their website, very interesting. For example, they would say an oil, quote, supports the respiratory system rather than it helps asthma. But they keep hinting and describing or actually slip out the word so you know exactly what they are claiming to cure. I hate that this gives people false hope. The sales rep also gave me advice for how to treat my IBS, but the the oils were crazy expensive, so I didn't buy them. The reps have a big book where they look through different body needs. For example, fertility or skin, and it would suggest oils for it. They essentially play doctor by just looking up words and finding the matching oils. Play doctors. 
Exactly. Where's the qualifications? Can't find them, but somehow they still feel qualified to be prescribing people things. The rep said multiple times that you can't overdose on oils because your body will only use what it needs and then flush out the rest. I mean, do I even need to explain why this is a very simplified and stupid understanding of how our bodies work? Lastly, the lady who was hosting one of the parties was asked by the sales rep to tell her story. She proceeded to talk about how she would be trying the oil blends that are for emotions to help her son who has autism. She admitted that she hasn't seen them help him at all yet. The sales rep then said something along the lines of, I just want to say how courageous you are and how proud I am of you for continuing to try these oils even though you aren't seeing results. What the heck? I hate this. That poor mom is spending so much money on oils to help her son that so far aren't even working. And I doubt they ever did. I also just hate how much doTERRA reps encourage using oils on kids. I can honestly say I have never seen a rep overcome an objection like that. The customer is saying, I have been using them, they have not been working. And her way to overcome that is to be like, how courageous of you to still use them even though they don't work. <laughs> what, what on earth is going on? That has gotta be the weirdest response I think I've ever heard. And I also agree that I do not like the encouragement of using oils on kids. And again, it just plays into the fact that we don't know what the long-term effects of this are, the research is non-existent. There's like a 50-50 chance that this could go south. There's so many layers to this example where they're trying to convince this mom that oils are going to help with her son's autism, which is extremely predatory. And then there might be some kind of like consent layer, like using unproven treatments or unproven methods on an unconsenting child. Like, I don't know. It just feels icky. That's all I'm saying. It just doesn't feel good. I do want to point out that I do know people who use oils, but didn't become sales reps who genuinely swear by some of the products. For me, it only got as far as lemon oil helping to get stickers off of jars. <laughs> and that should say something. They're advising you to consume and ingest lemon oil, the same substance that apparently is effective at removing adhesives. Why would you ingest that? I don't know. The issue for me, aside from the business model, is that uneducated people are giving detailed and potentially dangerous health advice. Absolutely. One more thing, I find it hilarious that they always say that they are the only oil company that is certified pure tested grade. This is literally just a term that they created and trademarked so it holds no weight and no other company could use it because it's literally a trademark. Oily MLMs are the worst. Thanks for reading my story. Certified pure tested grade. I completely agree that this is hilarious. In doTERRA their trademark is certified pure tested grade but in Young Living their trademark is seed to seal and in both of those cases it's just a made-up name. There is nothing backing that claim, but because it has a little trademark symbol next to it, it looks really official. I haven't done a deep dive into doTERRA yet, but when I did my Young Living deep dive, I figured out that Young Living used to call their oils therapeutic grade, and the National Advertising Division ruled that that was a misleading thing to be calling their oils because there was nothing backing it. And so in 2020, Young Living was like, oh, okay, we're not allowed to call our oils therapeutic grade anymore. We're just going to call them seed to seal instead. Dead. That's literally all it is. They flipped a switch, they changed the name. It means exactly nothing. And like I said, while I haven't done a deep dive into doTERRA yet, I would assume that this certified pure tested grade is the exact same situation. A completely empty trademark, a completely empty name. No meaning, no validity, it just sounds nice. This story says, hi, I just found your channel and I've been binging it, it's great. I have a story, a few stories. I'll do them in different emails. This one is the worst. Please don't use my name for legal reasons. Story one. About five years ago, I was driving with my then one-year-old and we were going to my husband's command summer picnic. I was also three months pregnant with my oops surprise daughter. We had been stopped at a red light that just turned green and I started to go when a lady plowed into me hitting the driver's side of my car. Airbags went off and we were shoved into the car next to us and then into a ditch. It was bad. I was bleeding and I noticed that my son wasn't making any noise. I started freaking out. Okay, I'm gonna insert a little bit of a trigger warning. I did read ahead a little bit. Obviously you can kind of see where this is going. Some sensitive topics at hand here. Please feel free to skip to the next story. An off-duty firefighter had been a few cars behind us and he came running. He checked on me and then went right to my son. When he was pulled out of the car, I swear I went cold. He was bleeding from his little head. Hearing his cry and scream for mommy was the best feeling in the world. I can only imagine. At this point, the driver that hit us came up to me and 
and asked if I was okay and why I got into her way. I said, I had the green light. She said, so I have sales I have to make. You know what? For a minute, I forgot we were on an MLM story. The person that hit you in the car was an MLM hun. She then said, if you had been using these oils, your son would be fine right now. Yep, she sold Young Living and she started spraying herself with oils and said that was how she was fine. Are you actually kidding me right now? A Young Living hun crashed into your car and said that your son wouldn't be in this critical condition if he had oils on his body? Is this a freaking joke? I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> like she thinks that she has this protective layer over her in a car crash because she's drenched in oils. What is going on? I remember yelling and cussing her out and trying to get out of the car because in that moment I was going to slap her. You know what? <laughs> I would probably feel the same way. How dare you say something like that? I was finally cut from the car and my son and I were loaded into an ambulance just as my husband showed up. I remember seeing him going white when he saw us in the car and he started to panic a little when they wouldn't let him get to us and how my son, who is the biggest daddy's boy, didn't even notice him. But when she started to try her pitch on him, I saw him turn red. She went after your husband now? Are you, I don't even know what to say. You're in the ambulance with your son, your husband's over here trying to get to you and she's intervening to pitch Young Living. I need to take some deep breaths. This is infuriating and I'm only laughing so that I don't cry. Little man was okay. God bless Graco. That car seat probably saved his life. He just had a concussion and some whiplash. They kept him in the hospital for a few days. I also had a concussion, whiplash, three broken ribs, lots of cuts, and they were worried about my pregnancy. She was fine and is now an Elsa loving little lady. <laughs> I love that. I was kept in overnight. I remember sitting in the room they put us both in when my young living rep car hitting B word walked into said room. She pulled out a lot of oils and set up a diffuser and started her pitch again. This lady. Relentless. That's the only word I have. I was shocked and pissed and ready to get out of my bed and straight her. I hit the nurse call button and had her removed. She ended up being arrested. She was driving on a suspended license, was driving without insurance. In that state, it was illegal to drive without it. And the kicker, she was high, so she got a DUI. I can't really talk about court stuff due to the settlement, but she tried to turn mediation into another sales pitch and only stopped when the court made her. I... I have no words. I remember telling her at one point that no one here cares about her pyramid scheme and she got offended. So yeah, that's the worst of my MLM stories. And if anyone tries to get me into one, I always use this story as my go-to as to how far the Huns will go. Wow. I don't... I don't even know what to say. I mean, who in their right mind can think that it's okay to take a car crash, a hospital visit, and court mediation as an appropriate opportunity to pitch Young Living Oils? I really don't feel like there's anything else I need to say on this. It's appalling. I think we can all agree on that. And this is a pretty extreme example of the fact that MLM reps oftentimes will stop at nothing. This story says, hi, this won't be super long and I don't even know if you'll get this. I'm a trans woman who's been out for a long, long time. My name is Anne and you can keep my name in the story. I just want to mention this isn't a crazy horror story or anything, at least not as crazy as some you have. I also want to mention I'm autistic and tend to sound weird when I type, so sorry for issues in grammar or general phrasings. Feel free to edit if you need. No worries about that. Totally fine. It's always been hard to be transgender, especially when I openly have been transitioning for years. About five years ago, during a time I was much less comfortable with myself, I was approached by a girl on my college campus. She knew me from our shared psychology class. She was very nice to me all the time and would talk to me often. But today she mentioned that I had cakey makeup on. This embarrassed me, obviously. I had been learning how to do makeup, which I know isn't a requirement for being a woman, but it gives me gender euphoria to put lipstick and light makeup on. The fact she pointed out that it looked kind of bad made me feel terrible. I thought she was going to say more rude things, but instead she offered me to a party her and her friends were hosting. She said I'd get a free makeover and maybe even some nice makeup tips to help me do my own. I was honestly really happy. It was hard for me to make friends and the idea that her friends would be open to me joining this party and doing traditional girly things with other people made me excited. The party was honestly not that bad. The makeup brand they used was Amway. Amway makeup. 
Why am I surprised? Obviously they have makeup. The thing about Amway is that they sell everything, everything, everything you could ever want Amway sells. But I think this might be the first time that an Amway consultant is focusing on the makeup products. I feel like that's not very common. When I started reading this, I was convinced that you were gonna say Mary Kay, pharmacy, or maybe even Arbonne or something like that. I was not expecting you to say Amway. <laughs> I honestly didn't mind the makeup at the time, possibly because I was so uninformed on good makeup brands at that time. We drank a little, laughed, talked about lots of cool stuff, and I even got some tips from various girls who would call me beautiful and splendid and all of those compliments. I honestly felt like the little girl I never got to be. That makes me so happy. And I will say, even though this experience was within the context of an MLM pitch, I'm really happy to hear that you got this kind of experience because I could imagine that this probably felt like a really pivotal moment for you, getting together with the girls, doing makeup, chatting, and getting that feeling of acceptance and confirmation sounds like that was a really positive experience for you. And so for those reasons, I'm really happy that you ended up at this Amway party. She didn't try to make me sign up at first or anything, but she did mention it a few times. Honestly, I was interested, but I couldn't afford that and still couldn't. I did, however, buy Amway from her occasionally. She would occasionally bring up working for the company, but I always declined. This would always make her upset, saying that if I joined, I'd probably do well because of my transitioning. She would say stuff along the lines of, quote, other LGBT people would see you as a success story you would look like a real girl to all the other trans women. That is a messed up comment. It made me feel gross, but I was so desperate for friends, I just made excuses not to join. After I declined, she'd be upset for a small amount of time, but go right back to normal, so I thought it wasn't a big deal. Maybe because I was one of her only customers at the time, she didn't want me to leave, even if I didn't join. We were somewhat friends for a while, but all her and her friends talked about was Amway, constantly. It was unbearable. It wasn't until I started watching beauty videos that I learned actually good brands, especially cheaper ones that were better for my budgeting. When I informed her that I could no longer buy her products nearly as often because I found better brands, she was incredibly angry at me, which led to a fight. She ended up calling me some pretty nasty anti-trans words. She told me that I'd look horrible and that I'd actually be wasting money on worse brands. I'm pretty disgusted at the fact that somebody would stoop as low as to make anti-trans comments to you, period, ever, but especially in the context of you declining her MLM pitch. Because you being a trans woman and not wanting to join in an MLM have nothing to do with each other. And for her to take it to that level feels really disgustingly inappropriate. Of course, I was scared. I broke the friendship right there and haven't talked to her since. Her friends all blocked me and when we saw each other on campus or in class, we would simply ignore each other. It makes me sad because she was one of the only friends I ever had. I still see her sometimes. This made me realize how many times you've mentioned vulnerabilities and people trying to convince the vulnerable to join or buy. I've never thought about it because I don't think I've seen many stories on how MLM reps will target LGBT plus individuals. By the way, I'm doing great now. I live in an apartment with my partner. They're non-binary with our two cats. Love that for you. And I'm still doing college, but I'm pushing through it. I've also learned a lot more about makeup since then, and I'm doing wonderfully. I'm so happy to hear that. And I absolutely love this story because you're right. It doesn't get talked about. So thank you for giving me a platform to talk about it. You're absolutely right that somebody in the midst of their transition is in a very vulnerable place. And I say this time and time Time again that vulnerable does not mean weak, incapable, unworthy. It is not synonymous with any of those things. It simply means you are more susceptible to other things impacting you. And for you, when this story takes place five years ago, you're right in the middle of that transition. You're still learning about things like makeup. And it appears to me that that Amway rep saw that as her route in. And that's not okay. It's not okay that this happened to you. But I do want to thank you for sending in this story because it is the first that I've read that deals with LGBT plus individuals individuals being targeted for MLMs. I'm so happy that you've made your voice heard on this subject. This story says, hi Hannah, I've been watching your videos for a few weeks now and I love the way you present information in a kind and clear way. My story isn't as bad as some of those you've shared, but I think it sheds an interesting light on the current landscape of making friends as an adult and how MLMs have affected it in a negative way. I've never been a part of an MLM. Even before I knew what an MLM was, I was never interested in any job concerning sales because I prefer a steady check over a commission-based job. My family grew up with 
with financial insecurity, and so my priority was always on stability and the avoidance of risk. I have purchased from Herbalife in the past. There was a storefront near my church, and a friend at the time would go there often. One day I joined her and bought a whole set of things. It started with a hot tea, then a protein shake, then a protein bar, and to be honest, I really enjoyed it. And if it wasn't for the fact that they were an MLM, I might still be using their products today. In 2019, through a series of unfortunate events, I lost my whole friend group and I was really lonely. I decided to open an Instagram account and thought I could connect with like-minded people. I just started trying to eat healthier and exercise and was posting often about my workouts and food and was following other people who were on a wellness and fitness journey. A woman about my age followed me and I followed her back. And for a few weeks, this woman and I were commenting on one another's pictures, responding to each other's stories and overall encouraging one another. I was so excited that I even told my mom and husband that I met a friend. I bet you know where this is going. I do know where this is going. And unfortunately, when you are open in public about any aspect of your life, fitness, health conditions, your family life, your kids, anything pretty much that you put out there on social media, there's an MLM for that. And they're going to use those opportunities to prey on you. So this idea that you open an Instagram account completely dedicated to your health journey, that is a complete minefield for health and wellness MLMs. Those are exactly the types of accounts that people in MLMs go on the hunt for. Who is looking to change their life and how can I insert myself? At this time, I had already started watching Kiki Chanel. It's interesting. It seems that each anti-MLM account sort of specializes in a certain MLM. Kiki is very outspoken against Beachbody. Turns out this Instagram friend invited me to join her Facebook group and I knew instantly she was from Beachbody because Kiki had spoken about it so much. I politely declined and never spoke with her again. Maybe I'm overreacting or maybe I was too invested, but that honestly hurt me very much. I thought she was interested in forming a friendship with me and all along she was in a long-term plan to get me onto her team. Absolutely, that's the way it goes. Those kinds of interactions on social media are very calculated. They do have ulterior motives and that does hurt people when that person realizes, oh, you're only talking to me because you want something from me. Two more times after that, I started conversations with women online thinking they were interested in being friends. And the same thing happened. One woman from Arbonne and another from Young Living. Crazy enough, the Young Living representative opened our conversation with, hey, I see we have so much in common. Maybe we could be friends. At the time I was so excited, but then stopped and decided to check her page. And sure enough, she was just trying to recruit me as well. In 2020, I reconnected with a woman I'd known for many years. We rekindled our friendship and started praying with one another over the phone. We were friends again and spoke almost every day over the summer. And then life happened and we strayed apart. Soon after that, she joined Monate. One day I posted about issues with my hair on Facebook. See, if you post about anything, there is an MLM for that. You post about your health and fitness journey, you're gonna get beach body. You post about your hair, you're gonna get Monate. It never ends. Nothing you post is safe. <laughs> there will be an MLM hun that preys on it. By that time, we hadn't spoken for a few months and she reached out to ask me how I was. I knew that she was going to bring up the business eventually, so I just played along and waited. Sure enough, she offered to send me free products. I declined politely. I told her that I don't support the MLM business model and that I don't want my hair to fall off. She sent a long message in response that I honestly didn't read and I left it at that. I've tried reaching out to her here and there, but she doesn't respond. It's as if all she cares about now is growing the business. Earlier, I mentioned how anti-MLM channels tend to have a specialty. And interestingly enough, after she joined Mon8, I found your channel and I've been able to learn so much from you about the truth behind that predatory business. It is true, I focus on Mon8 a lot. They are the most fascinating company to me. And I'm glad that the content I create about that company can be helpful. It was frustrating that she hadn't spoken to me for so long, but as soon as she saw an opportunity to sell to me, she reached out. These aren't even all the stories of old friends that have tried to speak with me and have pretended to want to be friends again when their only intention was to pitch their MLM. I am now now 30 and don't have any friends. I don't trust anyone online anymore. I feel like all I am to anyone nowadays is a sale or a business opportunity. Maybe I'm being dramatic, but after all I went through in my last friend group, MLM reps pretending to be my friend was really difficult and has made me feel like I'll never make any genuine friendships. I work entirely from home as well, so my options to meet friends are mostly online right now, and it just sucks that they are preying on people's loneliness as a means of opportunity. Thank you for reading my story if you do, and thank you for speaking out against MLMs. 
and thank you for bringing this issue to light in an eloquent way. This is an aspect of it that we talk about a lot, but it's crazy that there is a story this long that's just time after time after time of the same thing reoccurring from people in different companies. And that really does go to show that this is a systemic issue within the industry. It's not just Mon 8 Huns trying to be your friend. It's Young Living, it's Beachbody. It's an industry-wide tactic that is really hurtful, especially when you consider that when you're reaching out to somebody via a cold message and you're framing it like, hey, I think we could be really great friends. You don't know who's on the receiving end of that message. You don't know if they had a falling out with their friend group. You don't know if they're experiencing loneliness. You don't understand the impact of your words. To you, that could be nothing. To you, that could be like, hey, internet friends, cool. To the person on the receiving end, that could be a really meaningful message to get. And it makes it all the more hurtful when you eventually realize that it was all fake. It's so messed up. It's not okay to play with people's emotions like that. And like I said, it could be a seemingly harmless thing to do, but it's also a reckless thing to do. Pretending to be friends with people for your own financial gain is not a cute look. And I apologize on the behalf of all of these MLM reps that this did happen to you time and time again. You did not deserve that, but thank you for taking the time to write this out so that we can have that discussion. This story says, hi Hannah, I found you in my recommended section on YouTube. So I clicked, watched, became informed, and then subscribed. I love that. I realized in my lifetime, I've been exposed to more than one MLM, which I know and understand is common. And it made me think that I should send in my own stories. I prefer to stay anonymous. I have a few stories to share about quite a few MLMs that I come across. We will start with my first experience. When I was 17, I was added on Snapchat by a girl who Snapchat said I had a mutual friend with. Usually I would add those people because I figure that I can trust them. And if not, I can always block them. We will call this person T. Sweet little, hello, you probably don't know me, but type of introduction. And at that point I was like, okay, I think I remember her from blank. We talked for a few minutes in the chat and then she mentioned I had such pretty hair and that she had seen my Instagram and thought I would be perfect to ask to try her products. It was a company I'd never heard of before. Mon 8, here we go. I was asked about my normal hairstyling and the products I use. It was basically like a quiz on an app to see what products would be best for me. My hair is very thick, stick straight, long as heck, and is the thing I get the most compliments on. It is my safety blanket. When the quiz was finished, she said something along the lines of, the starter pack is only $200 and comes with free mini samples and a booklet on how to sell. I was extremely, extremely hesitant at first because I didn't have a job and I was unable to get one due to a TBI, traumatic brain injury, I had gotten, which caused me to struggle in my day-to-day -day life. I still have it eight years later. I was put on one of those calls where you couldn't exactly see each other, but you could talk to other people. They were discussing me and my hair and the products. I mentioned I was not interested in purchasing since I had no way to pay a large sum of money like that and that I was comfortable using what I always have. T basically said, it's okay, I'll pay you for it and you can pay me back later. I told T that I was not really okay with that, but I was under the pressure to do it. So I gave in after a little bit. And I feel like that interaction right there says a lot. In my opinion, within this context, if the rep is offering to pay for it for you and you can pay her back later, that is indicating to me that she's probably under some kind of time crunch. Maybe this occurred close to the end of the month. Maybe she was going for a new rank. Maybe she hadn't recruited enough people that month. And so she was kind of like, time's a ticking. If you need me to buy it for you right now, don't worry about it. Pay me back later. I just really need to secure this immediately. That's how it comes off to me. Fast forward to receiving the products. I got them, used them until they were empty and loved them. But I couldn't justify spending a large amount of money for products I didn't think were worth $100 for a bottle. Yes, the Rejuvenique oil is $100. They tried to tell me this would be a good way to start making my own money and being independent since I was only 17 and didn't have much responsibility due to me not being able to work. I don't think it's legal for you to join Monate if you're only 17. Let me look this up. I'm pretty positive you have to be 18. So the Monate policies and procedures say that you have to be of the age of majority in your state to become a market partner. And I just looked at three different sources and all of them say that in the United States, there is no state with an age of majority of 17. Most of the states are 18, a couple of them are 19. But actually I don't know if this story takes place in the US. Monate does operate in different countries 
country. So this could be a story from another country. I don't know. But if you are in the US and you really were 17 at the time of signing up, that's against the policy. <laughs> I don't know how that was possible. That's insane. I told my mom about the products and how T made me feel about it. And she said, without much context about anything, you need to find a way to pay her back. I felt like a monster for not paying T back for a long time. I never could or did. I lost contact with T anyways. And now that I've seen your stories, I learned that she bought herself a rank to get ahead. Exactly, that's exactly what I think happened. I don't think I am in the wrong for not paying her back since it was against the company's guidelines to buy rank. I figured that out after doing some research. My question for you is, do you think I'm in the wrong? Ooh, this is like a moral ethical kind of question, isn't it? I don't know, I mean, this is a challenging question because signing up a 17 year old is against the policy and so is rank buying. But now I'm kind of considering, okay, here's my question. Did you give your name, your address, your social security number, all those things? Like, did you fill it out for yourself? Did you? pick a starter pack? Did you actually sign up to be a market partner? Because honestly, I would not put it past somebody because I've seen this in the past from Monate reps where they have been really shady about signing people up for things versus just buying them product and putting it under their name and things like that. I'm kind of halfway wondering if you weren't a market partner at all and what she did was just place a bundle order of products and have it shipped to you so that she could hit her PV requirements or something. I think I would need more details. Did you give your social security number? Did you get a confirmation email? Did you have access to the back office? Did you have evidence that you actually did get signed up for this? Because if the situation was that yes, you actually signed up to be a market partner, you did agree with her that you would pay her back, then I do believe that that is your moral obligation to pay her back for that. But if the situation actually was that she didn't sign you up at all because you were 17 and she just purchased a bundle of products under your name and had them shipped to you so that she could hit some kind of rank, then I don't know, maybe morally, ethically, that would be a little bit different of a situation. I don't know, it's tough. I don't feel like I have all of the details here, so I can't make a definitive like, yes, you're in the right or wrong. All I know is that something shady is going on here and I don't like it. The second story is in October of 2021 where my boyfriend and I got very sick. I had bronchitis that went undiagnosed for a long time because I had to quarantine because of my boyfriend and he had COVID. Funny enough, I never got it. I was out of work for a long time in a time where I needed money. I had been sick on and off all year due to allergies, eczema flare-ups, asthma flare-ups, food poisoning, you name it, I probably had it. I have an extremely immunocompromised system and I constantly got sick. A girl on Instagram messaged me about a cool deal she had and how I can make money at home. At first I was interested, then she sent me a video or two to watch and to let her know when I watched them. I straight up told her, this isn't a Monate pitch, is it? <laughs> well, she avoided my question and simply said, just watch the videos and let me know what you think. I watched half of it only to realize this was an MLM Mon 8 pitch to get me to join their risky business where I was being offered a car, money, vacations, etc. The catch was that it was the amount of positivity radiating out of the video trying to sell me. And for a moment, it almost worked until they mentioned Mon 8. I told her I wasn't interested in joining partially because it was skincare that had stuff in it I was allergic to, like EpiPen allergic, but also because this time I was cautious and understood what was going on. We became more like friends over the next month and every few weeks she would ask me if I had money to buy stuff. I didn't as I was sick through the rest of the year. Bronchitis doesn't go away easily, especially in people with asthma. I was better to work in November and December. I'm an essential worker as I work in the delivery and package industry, but still took a lot of time off to get better and to see if I was eligible for a surgery that could help with sinus issues. It's weird that when you say you suffer from something, like for example, I have eczema and contact dermatitis, the other person will say, oh yeah, I have acne and I know how you feel. Those two are not the same. The person tried to relate to my problems and restate that Monate skincare made it go away. Well, I got blessed with great skin in terms of acne, but I do get that eczema I use topical creams for and very specific products to help keep it away. I didn't believe that Monate skincare made it go away. And she said to quote, replace it periodically with new Monate products to get me to fully use Monate. That is a strategy that MLM reps will use to overcome the objection that you just don't have money for it right now or whatever. They'll say, oh, just swap out one of your products at a time. So when you run out of your cleanser, rather than going and buying that brand again, switch to Monate. When you run out of your moisturizer, switch to Monate, that kind of thing. From there, I said, I'm not interested and we haven't spoken since. Yes, I'm feeling a lot better now. I had my surgery and I'm feeling like I am full of life again. That's great, I'm so happy to hear that. I just pick things up easily. I've also had a friend come to me and 
asked me personally about Monet and I just said, no, thank you. I don't see her advertising for them anymore, thankfully. The third thing isn't particularly a story, but rather something I didn't understand. My mom grew fond of Pampered Chef products and we still have some in the house. She claims them as a holy grail for cooking and not until today did I ever think it was an MLM. No, she didn't waste a ton of money on the products. I will be informing her about these MLMs later. Same for an old coworker. She works for Paparazzi, a jewelry company, which I was offered to buy from, but didn't know if the stuff contained nickel as I am allergic to nickel. Yes, I have a lot of allergies. I politely said no and she understood. I don't know if she knows it's an MLM. Funny you mention nickel in paparazzi jewelry. They claim to be nickel and lead free. However, allegedly, under independent testing of paparazzi jewelry, there have been nickel and lead found in their pieces. Savannah Marie is another incredible anti-MLM creator. She has done a great job of covering this entire situation. I will link a video of hers below detailing all the findings of this testing that did show that paparazzi jewelry contained nickel, even though they claim it didn't. So good on you for being cautious and for staying away, because even though they claim it did not have nickel or lead, apparently it does. And that could have been really, really bad for you. Thank goodness you kept your distance. Lastly, there's Lou LaRoe, a legging company with a bunch of lies. My ex's mother, who was fond of me and not his now wife. Oh, oh, some drama. <laughs> okay. She invited me and my mom to try the brand. It was a whole party and it was awkward. There were full dressing rooms in an attic and you were being forced to buy something. I don't think she knew it was an MLM. The leggings were okay, but the prints were weird and the sellers tried to tell me it was better than Lululemon. That is a fat joke. They're not the same. They can't be compared. LuLaRoe leggings, they are comfortable. I'll give them that, but they're almost like PJ loungewear material. They're not active wear by any stretch of the imagination. That is really funny that they're claiming to be like an active wear brand of any kind. I would never wear LuLaRoe leggings to work out. That would just never even cross my mind. I still have them to this day and the same with my first pair of Lulus. And I might add, they held up very differently to one another. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> Lastly, I hate the term boss babe or anything similar. Thank you for taking the time to read my stories. I'm sure I've come across more, but these were just the ones that stuck out to me the most. You're doing an amazing job educating people on these MLMs. Great collection of stories. Thank you for taking the time to write those out. And I totally agree that the industry of multi-level marketing has ruined a lot of terms for me. Boss babe, mindset, entrepreneur, anything in that realm. <laughs> I can't take it seriously. Thank you MLMs for completely ruining those for me. And with that, my friends, that's all the stories that I have for you for this MLM horror stories video. And again, if you have your own horror story that you would like to send to me, check out the description box for the instructions on that. And additionally, thank you again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. The link for 65% off your Babbel subscription can be found in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.